A beautiful August afternoon here at Wrigley Field and a great atmosphere. A couple of wild card contenders in the National League going at it this weekend. Cubs baseball here on WGN Sports. It's the defending world champion Giants against the Cubs and the updated NL wild card standings. The Cubs leapfrogging over the Giants with a 5 4 win in game one last night. And great to have you with us as we kick off the weekend. Jim Deshays and Len Casper. We're going to get right into the pitching matchup today. John Lester moved up a day after his start was rained out on Monday. And the uh, Giants going with a replacement starter today. Yeah, Mike Leake's got a little bit of a hamstring issue, so he has gone to the DL. Ryan Vogelsong, who has made a number of starts this year, he's been pinging back and forth between the rotation and the bullpen, will make the start for San Francisco today. His last six starts against the Cubs. A good 4 and 2 with a 382 ERA. Lifetime in this ballpark, however, he has an ERA above six. And John Lester, brilliant in the month of July, made six starts, pitched to a 166 ERA, went at least seven innings in each of those starts. And the last time out for Lester in this ballpark, he struck out 14 Rockies. Last night, the Cubs scored early, had a 5 0 lead. The bullpen able to hang on late. They'll go for. Two in a row over the Giants and their eighth win in their last nine tries overall. Next. Lester's ready to go a couple of minutes early. It'll be former Cub Angel Pagan, switch hitting center fielder to lead it off. Cubs looking for win number 60 on the year. Lester was ready to play and Addison Russell and Chris Bryant were having a conversation over on the left side of the infield. So here we go. And outside ball one to get us started. You know, fun atmosphere in the ballpark here uh, last night another packed house this afternoon should be a fun day. A playoff atmosphere. Boy, uh, Bruce Bochy had his bullpen getting hot in the first inning. Joe Madden uh, pulled Jason Hamill early. The 2 0 pitch is right down the middle. We've got Cubs lineup news. 
here in a second. Miguel Montero activated from the disabled list today. He is available off the bench. David Ross, as per usual, catching for John Lester's Chris Bryant. Gets Pagan. The rest of the Giants lineup. They rank third in the major leagues with a 272 batting average. Kelby Tomlinson, rookie, is up because Joe Panic, the uh, All Stars on the DL. Matt Duffy, a rookie, has been terrific. Buster Posey in the lineup for the first time in this series. Pence, Crawford, Belt. Justin Maxwell gets to start in left with the pitcher Ryan Vogel's song batting ninth. Here is Tomlinson, just his fourth major league game. And he shows bunt and takes a fastball at 95. Mm -hmm. A little low. A little crisp here. Uh, well, his last start was washed out. Uh, he worked just an inning and two thirds on Monday in Pittsburgh before that game was postponed. And he's below 500 for the year, um, but he has pitched far better than that 6 and 8 record, 326, the ERA. He's chopped about a run off of it over his last nine starts. Showed you in our open his numbers for July, his last three starts, excuse me, 22 and a third. Just four runs allowed, 27 strikeouts in those three ball games against two walks. Fouled into the upper deck. Let's set the umpires. Paul Schreiber wearing the mask. It's Fielding Culbreth, the crew chief at first, Jim Reynolds at second, and Manny Gonzalez over at third. Second of a seven game season series. That will all be played here in the month of August. Four here and three at AT&T Park, the 25th through the 27th. On the outside corner. A strike three call. Let's check in with the Cubs defensively. Got a little different look for you here today. We'll show you their ages. 22 year old Kyle Schwarber in left, Fowler the veteran in center, and Solaire just 23 years of age in right. So a youth of the theme here on that the left side of the infield. Brian and Russell 23 21 respectively. Coglin is playing second base today. That's part of a bigger story. Anthony Rizzo turns 26 tomorrow. And uh, the KG veteran David Ross at 38 behind the plate. Strike one. And Matt Duffy. He's knocked in 51 this year. Only Chris Bryant has more RBIs among all rookies. Chris with 61. Right back to Lester. And the Giants go down one, two, three. Cubs coming up when we return. Now at Southwest.com. So Fowler in the leadoff spot. Schwarber playing left, batting second. Chris Coglin playing second and hitting third ahead of Anthony Rizzo. Chris Bryant. Jorge Soler had a nice night last night. David Ross catching and batting seventh ahead of the pitcher Lester Addison Russell. It's ninth. 
Giants defensively. Justin Maxwell will play left this afternoon. Pagan center. Pence right. Duffy Crawford. Tomlinson belt. Third to first. Uh, the all-star buster Posey behind the plate and making the spot start. Ryan Vogelsong. He's made 16 starts. He's worked eight times out of the pen. And he has compiled a 7-7 seven seven record with a 4.16 earned run average. Yeah, this is certainly not an unfamiliar role for him. Mike Leak on the DL. He's got a strained hamstring after just one start with the Giants. They're hoping he'll only miss a couple of turns. One ball, no strikes on Dexter Fowler. So Tim Lincecum, Tim Hudson, and Mike Leak are all currently on the DL. Cutter and Fowler fouls one and one. And Jake TV has spent time on the DL. Matt Kane has spent time on the DL. So the one constant in their rotation has been Madison Bumgarner and rookie Heston. Pitch. High strike and a comeback sinker. And it's one and two. Just two out of his last 27. He has mixed in four walks during this stretch and has reached base at least once in 20 consecutive games. Two and two. Yeah, took a borderline pitch there, and um, I don't know if we've seen enough to make any conclusions. But Schreiber looks like he's more inclined to call the high strike than the low strike. Full count, three and two. Vogel song not a hard thrower average in terms of velocity maybe a tick below. There's a lot of cutters curveball and a change. Fifth round pick of the Giants back in 98 he has not spent his whole career in their organization. Long time pirate. He's pitched in Japan. Beautiful 76 degrees. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, a crosswind from right to left. A crosswind that has really picked up in intensity in the last hour or so. And it's been blowing pretty good all day, but the flags are ripping right now. Vogel song, a pretty good story. He did not pitch in the big leagues between the 20 appearances in 06 with Pittsburgh and then. 2011 with the Giants when he became an all star for the first and only time. And again, minor league time. Some work in Japan. Called strike three to get fouled. Batting excellent fielder, number 12, Kyle Schwarber. Kyle Schwarber he pulled this one right off JD's iPod. Thuggish, ruggish home. Just came out right around the time he was born. Not familiar with it. Here's the pitch. Curveball is in for a strike. Little did you know, Kyle Schwarber is in the band, at least for our purposes. So Bone is the band. Uh, yeah, Thugs and Harmony. Yep. Left center, that ball slicing, and it's going to rest right at the base of the wall, and he's got a double. He just keeps hitting. National League pitchers do not have an answer for Kyle Schwarber. I mean, sooner or later, you would think they're going to find some flaws, some holes, and try to exploit them, but so far, he has just settled in so nicely. Seven for his last 15, two doubles, three homers for Schwarber. Chris Coglin, this is only 
his second major league start as a second baseman but he played that position more than any other in the minor leagues coming up in the Marlins system. Joe Madden has been very patient with Starlin Castro. It's been a rough go for for Castro, so Joe's just decided that uh, you know all bets are off here. These final 55 games, he's going to try to put his best team on the uh, on the field each and every day, and Starlin's going to lose playing time because of it. Hit hard on the ground, and it glances off the glove of Tomlinson. Schwarber's going to score. RBI single, Chris Coughlin. Three batters in, it's one nothing. Two in the first last night for the Cubs, three more in the second on the Schwarber three run blast. They jumped out to a five nothing lead and draw first blood here this afternoon. Tomlinson in position to glove that ball, just could not. Anthony Rizzo. Two hits, hit by pitch, walked, stole a base, scored a run last night. And what a run he is on. Last eight games, he's got 15 hits, including five home runs. Just think of the numbers he'd be putting up if the wind wasn't blowing in uh, here all summer long. Mm -hmm. Fouls it off one and two. And then Vogel's song, a product of Kutztown University. That's in Pennsylvania. There's an NFL running back who puts down his name escapes me. Played for the Jets, I believe, a few years ago. And the hands and fouled away. Now this is his fifth year in a giant uniform. He's 38 years of age. 56 and 64 lifetime with a 440. Re-upped with the Giants in January. Field. This is Maxwell. Yeah, we referenced their bullpen last night, guys. We uh, core group, the core four. They've been together for a while, and because Ryan Sabian and Bruce Bochy have been at the helm for so long, the Giants have been pretty loyal to a lot of their players. That makes sense. You have a long run. Well, yeah, especially with John, if you're if you're winning, yep. um, and guys are doing good things. Three of the last five World Series. Right now, though, a half game out of the playoffs. Trailing the Cubs in the wild card. And right now, three games back of the Dodgers in the National League West. One strike on Chris Bryant. Ninety-ninth major league game for Chris. Montero. Matt Caesar sent back to AAA. We have a few free flights coming up with all the frequent flyer miles. Good 
lead by Coglin. The 1 1 is off the outside corner. Vogelsong wanted it, didn't get it. What he should do is at least write a long, uh, long form uh, magazine article about his travels this year, kind of a baseball slash travel log, the ups and downs of Matt Caesar. That's a great title. Three and one on Bryant. Montero hit a grand slam last night for Tennessee. Matt's been sent out so many times now. You probably, I'm sure that, and I know they did. They called him, but you could just send him a text and say, "You know, Miguel missing a little less than a month with the sprained left thumb." Crawford will scoop. And they will force Coglin, Kyle Schwarber in the lineup again today, playing left. Double and a run in the opening inning, and the Cubs lead 1 0. Go to WGNTV.com right now. Click on the WGN Sports Game Zone banner. Connect to all the up to the minute stats and information while you watch from home. Game Zone is sponsored by the Great Escape Pools, Patio Furniture, Play Sets, Hot Tubs, and more. Everything you need to have more fun at home this summer. 1 and 0 oh on Buster Posey. Live ball the other way, so there now. Way in that wind, playing tricks with it, and he can't make the catch. That is not Jorge Soler's fault. And again, the wind blowing right to left. He needed some help, and he didn't get it. Yeah, all hands on deck. You can't give up on anything here and assume anybody's going to make a play. And I think Dexter Fowler got caught uh, yielding maybe a little too early to Soler. There could be some adventures here today. Uh, bright sky overhead, strong wind blowing. A helpless feeling for Solaris. Not able to put that one away. This officially is the eighth time we've had a crosswind. That's either southeast or northwest. But I, I'm going to guess here it's maybe the second or third day we've actually had a southeast wind. So yeah, you got to recalibrate on a day like this. One ball, no strikes on Hunter Pence. Yeah, and it's not, it's not like it was an easy play for Dexter or anybody else, but it's just, you know, you can make no assumptions on a ball in the air. Dogged pursuit by everybody until somebody settles under it. Foul tipped by Pence. It's one and one.
Both these teams uh, well aware of the weather. Uh, you'd have to say by far Wrigley Field and AT&T Park. Ball games affected by the weather the wind. More than any other. Schwarber over in the left center makes the catch. Talking with Joe today about defense because again you get Coglin a bit out of position Schwarber as well. You feel obviously good about David Ross. The reason he's in there today is for defense and game calling. But we may see a different lineup every day. Yeah, I think you know Chris Coglin becomes Joseph Ben Zobrist, um, a guy who's willing to move around because of his versatility. You're going to see Addison Russell a fair bit at shortstop. Joe talking before the game said it's not like Starlin Castro's not going to play shortstop. He's just not going to be out there every day anymore. And then Crawford ground ball in the right and a base hit. Posey will be sent by Roberto Kelly. Throw to the plate is late. And we're tied at one. Crawford with his third RBI of the series. He hit a home run last night. And just like that, a tie ball game. Yeah, that breaks for Lester. John Lester very upset out there behind the mound. That's that's the nature of it. You know, sometimes uh, the elements betray you. The blue double and then the solid single and we're tied. The Giants were in on John Lester. They like the Cubs heavily recruited him. Cubs ultimately won out. And ball one on Brandon Belt. Crawford and Belt each hit opposite field two run homers last night. Counting for all their runs. And might push this one to the seats, and it will. On the evening of August 13th, mingle with John Lester, celebrities, Cubs coaches, and teammates for the first ever Never Quit Night at the Metro. Enjoy the three up, three down event. It's a fun take on the famous. Hollywood Squares bid on great auction items and enjoy dinner and cocktails. Net proceeds from the event help fund pediatric cancer research. Tickets are on sale now. Go to CubsCharities.com. Crawford measuring a very aggressive lead. And I'm running. The Giants don't run a lot. A hit for a high average. They hit a lot of doubles. There he goes. And the throw. He got him. Russell tagged him on the way through as he tumbled past Crawford. How about that tag? What an athletic play by Addison Russell. My goodness. David Ross staring at him trying to get his attention to, to give him a little thumbs up. Don't you Russell make the adjustment to the throw that's on the inside of the bag. Catch it and as he's tumbling slap that tag on the shoulder of Brandon Crawford. Obviously Crawford doesn't know where that throw is going to end up. But if he had adjusted and slid toward the inside of the bag he likely would have avoided you know, that tag. But that is just a great play by Russell. So that's a third base runner. Ross has thrown out in essentially Lester's last two starts, although Monday night, of course, did not count. We're uh, featuring summer tunes for suggestions today. 1 1.
blog at WGNTV.com. It is sponsored by Jeff Vukovic, your nationwide insurance agent serving the area for 37 years. To join the nation, contact Jeff at JeffVuk.com. Nationwide is on your side. 1-1 one, one tie and a roller towards center. Backhanded play. Tomlinson, no chance. And Solaire has an infield hit. It was third hit of the series and a seven game hitting streak. Pretty play by Tomlinson, but uh, barring a, a tumble, a stumble from Solaire, they weren't going to get him. David Ross, 31st start this season. Short lead by Soler at first. Inside that time. Only matinee around baseball. Everything else tonight, which is the norm on a Friday. If you grow up in Chicago and you have the word night on a spelling test and you spell it N I T E, are you excused by the teacher? Are you I okay? Hope so. Yeah, so. Series in Pittsburgh this weekend, Dodgers and Pirates. Dodgers and the Giants chasing the Dodgers in the West. Pirates leading the wild card race. So uh, Clayton Kershaw and Garrett Cole tonight at PNC Park. Not bad. Pitch. Ross fouled it off himself. Who else is going to foul it off? Cup fans, let's go. We have hit the stretch run. Come out and enjoy great weather at this beautiful ballpark and watch a great matchup. The Cubs Giants again tomorrow and then again on Sunday. For tickets, visit Cubs.com. Look at that splashy new graphic, too. The Young Guns. John Lester on deck. Full count on Ross. Now, not an extreme ground ball pitcher. As you contemplate whether to start so Lair here. David Ross swings and misses a fair bit. Vogel Song's not an overpowering guy either, so you don't get a lot of swings and misses with him. Ball strike three. Two strikeouts for Vogel Song, both of the looking variety. Here's Lester. One out of 39. And all those sack bunts came in one start. Squares and bunts and foul. Same start time tomorrow, one twenty first pitch. On Sunday, Matt Kane, Kyle Hendricks in game three, Jake Peavy and Jake Arietta in the finale, 0 and 2 on Lester. There's 
Russell on deck. Oops, will be off on Monday. And then Brewers come in. Ball strike three to Lester. And we're going to be out in the bleachers here on WGN Wednesday night. That's Milwaukee. Tried to put that bunt down on the first pitch and then took it off. I'm a little bit surprised they didn't keep it on or at least put it back on. Yeah, we'll be out there on Wednesday with the Brewers in town. Look at that smile. You've been whitening your teeth. No, but uh, the goatee's a lot darker than the real one. Strike to Russell. Going short today. Two strikes on Russell. So Lair still at first. He let off the inning with an infield hit. But then Ross and Lester struck out. Down by Posey. Those are eleven games over five hundred, tying their season high. By Duffy at third, and that'll end the inning. Cubs clubhouse manager Tom Otis Hellman wanted to hear a little love in the spoonful. Still brewed the hard way. This buds for you. Big crowd, great weather. And playoff hopefuls doing battle this weekend. Justin Maxwell playing left. He's made starts at all three spots. National Astro and Royal. Getting eighth in their lineup today. Vogel, Song, and then Pagan. And the Giants third. 
Lined and that handcuffed Brian. He was able to knock it down. Throw it first. Got him. I don't think Chris got a good look at that ball. But he was able to get a glove on it. That'll go five to three the hard way. Yeah, I mean, maybe a little uh, element of self-defense there, but Brian got the job done. This ball really smoked by Maxwell. Fortunately for him, the ball settled right in front of him. He was able to recover and make the play. Justin Maxwell just now leaving the field is. Giants contemplating a challenge will not. A good examples of the hot corner. Duffy made that diving play, and then Chris Bryant to start the third. Vogel song batting 143. It's ball one. I mentioned earlier. The last official start for John Lester was his best as a Cub. Eight innings here on the 29th of July. 3 2 win over Colorado. He struck out 14, walked only one. First Cubs left hander to strike out that many since at least 1914. Two and one. Rizzo with a nice play. Lester not getting the swings and misses in this start. One strikeout so far. He caught Tomlinson looking in the first. Pretty solid contact by Maxwell and Vogelsong in this inning, but they're out. Pagano for five in the series, returned to the lineup last night after missing three starts with right knee soreness. Switch batter hitting right handed. Fair amount of injury problems in his career. Oh, a lot of back stuff, hadn't he? Yeah, he had back surgery last year, missed the postseason. And going back to his Cub days, he had a bad uh, hamstring injury. Suffered, I think it was in Pittsburgh, running to first base, blew it out back in 06. Season ended early in 07 with the Cubs due to colitis. A lot better from this side of the plate. 318 as a right handed hitter this year. It's 238 from the left side. Still two and two. Trade in Major League Baseball today. The Atlanta Braves have reacquired Michael Bourne. They also picked up Nick Swisher, who's two coming from Cleveland, and Chris Johnson moves from Atlanta to uh, Cleveland. Off the plate in, full count. Tomlinson would hit next. Some money involved in that deal as well. So an example of the kinds of deals that can be done after the trade deadline. Cubs are proud to salute the men and women of the United States Armed Forces. Monday, August 31st, show your support by buying tickets through the Cubs special events page. Tickets will be in uh, Terrace Reserve Outfield, and each ticket includes a special Cubs 
Armed Forces baseball cap. That's deep left field. Schwarber back on it. Nicely done. Uh, Cubs.com slash special events. Schwarber looked very natural on that running grab. Two more here with the Giants. Uh, day games tomorrow and Sunday. Off day Monday, then three with Milwaukee before heading south across town for a set with the White Sox. Ford, America's best selling brand, inviting you to go further in our fuel efficient vehicles. Check out our entire lineup at your Ford store or at localfordstores.com. Pitch to Fowler is over for we'll strike. Struck out looking in the first. 1-1 one, one tie. Cubs got their run in the opening inning. Giants struck right back in the second. Duffy in at third. This team right now with Montero back and healthy, with the versatility of Coglin, you've got a couple of guys waiting in the wings in, in Javier Baez, Tommy Listella, middle infielders. I'm sure, Matt Caesar will be back at the latest on well, September 1st. There's some good depth position player wise, and that's, I wouldn't say quick pressure, that's probably not the word Joe would use, but. I'm sure it's gotten the attention of a lot of position players because yeah, Joe has yeah. basically announced you produce you play right um, and it does put pressure and just the question is how do you respond to that pressure. 2 2 Fowler. Bounces it foul. Um, and Jimmy Williams was managing in Houston and he's not the first one nor is he the only one but he was very fond of saying I don't write out the lineup card the players do. So basically, you know, based on your performance, you're going to be in there. Another favorite phrase of Jimmy Williams was manager's decision. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> Jimmy did not like to be second guessed. Let's take a look at our Mazda replay cam. We go back to the big three run homer by Kyle Schwarber last night. He has been uh, something special here. Love the approach. Mazda conviction, creativity, courage. 
This is the Mazda way. A bumper crop of rookies in Major League Baseball, a whole bunch in the National League. I don't know if it's too late for Kyle to be, you know, considered for the rookie of the year, but if he continues to swing it the way he has, I would think he's got a chance to get some votes, maybe even win that award. Earlier this year, it seemed like it was a two man race between Chris Bryant and Jock Peterson. They've come back to the pack a little bit. There's been any number of guys that have put up very big numbers. Oh, strike three. Well, not that ultimately it matters. My only thing with, with the rookie of the year is I, I think quantity does matter. And yeah, I've got been guys who've won yeah. the award with 85, 90 games, but I feel like you almost need to be playing about 100 games just to be able to, to get through a slump or two, right? Yeah, that's what I mean. I, 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 you know, I think Kyle's on kind of on the outside looking into that conversation right now. But if he were to continue to play at the level that he's playing at now, absolutely. All of a sudden, you go, well, this this guy, this kid's done something really special. Here. Kind of like the Correa kid in, in Houston at shortstop. Ryan Vogelson must have the invisible working here today. Four punch outs, all looking. And he's thrown a number of uh, what appear to be really hittable fastballs that guys were just locked up on. He's got sneaky cheese. A line in the center. Codlin's two for two. Well, that had a good sound off the bat. Yeah, like if you're doing radio and you needed a sound effect for a base hit, you, you, that's a few dudes right there. Probably what they had a couple of sticks up in the booth when they used to do recreations way back in the day. Mm -hmm. So fly to left in the opening inning. Two and nothing on Rizzo. Here comes missed again. Talked last time Anthony was up about the wind patterns in this ballpark and how it's been a very pitcher friendly yard this year. He's only hit six of his 21 home runs here at Wrigley. Real green light and he fouls into the upper deck behind third. Yeah, this park has played really big this year. And the Cubs are averaging 3.25 runs per game at Wrigley. That's last among all teams in their home ballpark. And the lowest ever for a Cubs team at Wrigley Field was 3.25 runs per game. The 1919 Chicago Cubs. That's at the tail end of the dead ball era. And not a lot of run scoring going on back then. Swing and a miss, so Vogel's song comes all the way back. And he strikes him out. Another one from JD's iPod, Banana Ramble.
fourth inning Tomlinson Duffy and Posey. Against John Lester. First pitch is hit on the ground right to a drawn in Chris Bryant for all kinds of time. One pitch one out. Hey folks uh, Thursday August 20th is uh, Chicago Fire Department night here at the ballpark the Atlanta Braves are in town tickets will be in the Terrace Reserve outfield. And include a special Cubs firefighter baseball cap for details visit Cubs.com slash special events. There's Duffy. He's got an eight game hitting streak. Jones Bunt takes ball one outside. Yeah, with uh, John Lester on the mound, all the cutters he throws uh, in on right handers, much more likely if the ball sit on the ground to be to the shortstop side. And I think Joe Madden takes a little comfort in, in starting Chris Coghlan at second here today for that reason. I mean, he, he, as you mentioned, he played a fair bit of it in the minor leagues. That's what he did in college. He was an infielder. Um, but he hasn't done a whole lot of it in recent seasons. He's been working out out there. So it provides a little bit of a soft landing and you know as you kind of look at the, the pitcher hitter matchups and where guys tendencies are where they hit the ball that will influence the manager who's putting together his lineup and who's going to play where. Fair ball inside the bag and through the bullpen. Schwarber will pick it up. And Matt Duffy's got a double. Well, we have a chance. Let's step aside and see what's coming up on WGN. Beautiful day here at Wrigley Field, game two of four. And the Giants in a 1 1 tie have a runner in scoring position. And one out for Buster Posey. He doubled and scored in the second. And had a little pop up in the shallow right center field that the wind got a hold of, and Solaire couldn't run it down. Imagine the. A fair number of his uh, teammates were thinking, yeah, Buster needs that kind of a hit. He's only hit 332. 72nd start behind the plate. He has made 22 starts at first, three as their DH. And he has missed 12 starts this year, including last night. He's hitting 418 over his last 32 games. Down by Ross. One and two. And normally those guys in the bullpen on a foul ball, they, they will not move. They've got some sort of you know, collective bet to see who can not flinch. But on a fair ball, you kind of need to get out of the way. They scattered Travis Wood and Chad Noble. The outside two and two. And trying to fill that back door cutter, trying to work it back to the outside edge, and never got there. Coglin moving to his right makes the play. Duffy now third, but there are two outs. We love to see your Cubs selfies at hashtag WGN Cubs. Cub fan getting a picture with Dexter Fowler. And that looks like a selfie, doesn't it? Kind of has I would go look. selfie, yeah. yeah. We have a new game show. Selfie or not selfie. I'm gonna go selfie on that one. Did that show about two weeks. Thought of another one too. Um, 
just for real diehard baseball fans when you were doing the umpires earlier um, guess the crew chief because I would have guessed Jim Reynolds but it's Fielding Colbert. Okay, uh, crew chief is is the umpire among the four with the most service time. That'd be a very obscure Jeopardy category. Yeah. It's a good fastball hitter. He's good up in the zone. A hard in on the knuckles and then soft away. David Ross, whatever he called, wasn't sure and wanted to go out and chat with John Lester about it. Well, here's what I called. Here's what I was thinking. Now let's take a look at the scouting report here. Hunter Pence uses auto draft. Doesn't believe in global warming and writes Drake's lyrics. So it's kind of a gentle. Critiques that started last year, I think, in New York and became a thing. Broke his bat. Bryant with an off balance throw, and he gets a hustling Hunter Pence, and the inning is over. So. Lester Strands Duffy at third. 1-1. One, one. Cubs MasterCard debit card only available at your local Wintrust Community Bank. Go to Wintrust.com slash Cubs to learn more. Member FDIC. Great to see former Cub Bat Boy Pasquale Gianni here today with his grandfather Dominic DeFrisco. Doing the Giants and the Cubs. Pretty good seats. Yeah. Irish family. One and oh on Bryant. Popped him up. Wind will keep this ball fair. Belt makes the catch. Bryant hustling down the line. Make sure you run him out today, boys. You prefer the guys run him out all the time, but especially on a day like today. Dolaire with a single to lead off the second. Hi. 
sits on the curve at 76 and it's over for strike one. Well, who knows? Could be Cubs and Giants at some point in October. Last time they met up in the playoffs was 1989. Giants won the NLCS four games to one. Giants won game one 11 to three here at Wrigley. Cubs took game two behind Les Lancaster. They got the win in relief. And then uh, the Giants won the final three games. They were all tight ones 5 4, 6 4, and 3 2. All played at Candlestick Park. Will Clark hit two home runs in the opener of that series. Mark Grace, Ryan Sandberg, up deep. Play here. Nope. Make sure you stay tuned for the seventh inning stretch brought to you by Budweiser. Still brewed the hard way. This Bud's for you. Glenview's Pat Foley, the Hall of Fame TV voice, and the Stanley Cup champion, Chicago Blackhawks. He's probably off enjoying some nice ice cream right about now. Yeah. Hold off. Cubs under Don Zimmer went 93 and 69 to win the National League East. So there takes ball four. Cup fans don't miss your chance to catch the best matchups in baseball. Reserve your place in line for history in the making. Join the season ticket holder waiting list. It's easy, free to register. For details, visit cubs.com slash waiting list. I'm being reminded, and it's a great point, that the Cubs and Giants did match up in 98. In game 163, that was not technically a playoff game. Cubs won that one to get to the division round. Lost to the Braves. Old foul. Say there you go. That was foul. Nobody moves. Tommy Hunter gets into the mix. That's peer pressure now. Lester has to go pick up the ball. <laughs> Guys making the old guy pick up the ball. <laughs> Cover up. That's yeah, like a sensitive area. Yeah, like in soccer for the free kick. Doesn't do a whole lot to dispel that whole dumb jock theory, does it? Cut the mess. One and two. Oh, you rotate in. Jason Mott takes over. Side out, rotate.
Home run ball has been a little bit of an issue for Vogelsong this year. 15 long ones allowed in 101 innings prior to this start. Calls off Pagan. His last two with two outs. So they're still at first. Non DH games or National League style games. Joe Madden has hit the pitcher eighth all year. That would be a story, right? We, we, we look at his lineup changes. If he hit the pitcher ninth, that that would qualify as big news. But he hasn't done it yet. No. We talked at the beginning of the year that he might, depending on who the pitcher was, hit him ninth. I just think he decided to go with it and he has seen no compelling reason to change it. I'm sure the analytical guys have run all kinds of models. Run yeah. expectancy with the pitcher hitting eighth versus ninth. Yeah, if they told him it was a big detriment statistically, he wouldn't do it. What Siri would say if you asked her. Siri, should we bat our pitcher ninth or eighth? Swing and a miss. You want to go to eighth straight? One one after four. The Curious Bank. The 1 1 tie. Comes with another one run decision and a win last night, 5 to 4. And they are 25 and 17. 42 games decided by just one run. Oh, the 
Crawford pops it up. Bryant over near the barrier. And the wind again. Affecting a pop up and knocking it out of play. One of the storylines post game yesterday and uh, before the game today with Joe Madden was his early hook for Jason Hamill. Jason worked uh, four innings plus two batters. And Joe went and got him. Um, Jason Hamill clearly not happy. And you see it on the mound at the time. You could hear it in his comments after the game. Ultimately said, look, I get it. We won the game. I understand it. Uh, and Joe today was saying, I get it. I understand why he was mad. I just felt like uh, I couldn't afford to let that one get away. And I felt like the best chance to make that happen was to make that move to the bullpen. And the other part of it for Joe, in, in making that early move to the pen, he knew he had John Lester going today, who's been so good now for a good long while. Felt pretty confident Lester would be able to pitch deep into this game. One two to Crawford. Swing and a miss and a curve. A strike three. But, you know, it's, it's, you can understand both guys' points. You know, Jason's had a heck of a year. He's arguing that uh, he's, you know, he's earned the right to stay in that game. And I agree with him. He has earned the right to stay in that game. But I also agree with Joe that whatever he, as the manager, feels like the best chance of getting out of the inning, if you've got the bullets and the arms available down there, go for it. It's, it's October style of managing. Big series, important game, fresh pen. Stud going the next day. And while we tend to look at the use and sometimes overuse of bullpen, last night you could also say, well, that saves an inning or two or three for Jason Hamill maybe in September that he didn't throw last night. Four homers the last six games for Brandon Belt. Fifth major league season. He's been a good offensive performer. OPS of 799 in his career. That doesn't stand out in terms of elite first baseman, but he's just been solid. Plays a little corner outfield as well. He's just 26 years of age and he's dealt with some injuries in his career, so I think the best is yet to come for Belt. He has not done a whole lot against left-handed pitching. Just 216 this year with a couple of walks. So that would be the next step for him. Kind of like Rizzo. You know, if he could do a little more damage against left handed pitching, he could take the next step. And a 3 1 count, and he hits a bullet to center. And it's caught by Fowler. Take home a game used or autographed item and help benefit Cubs charities. Cubs Authentics is the premier outlet for all MLB authenticated Cubs memorabilia. Visit Cubs.com slash Authentics to bid on weekly auction items and to pre-order game used bases and baseballs. Cubs will donate net proceeds from the sale of Cubs Authentics to Cubs charities. So Brian uh, just tweeted us that he asked Siri about batting the pitcher eight and she told him she doesn't know what to do with the pitcher but she has often wondered about it herself. <laughs> Is that right? One strike on Maxwell. That's the next evolution of the technology now, right? We talk about all the smart guys crunching the numbers, the analytics departments that all these teams have. Someday we're going to get to the point where we have a robotic manager. Just punch in the game situation and he'll tell you what to do. One and two on Maxwell. First pitch was a ball. Put on the board as his strike. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really in favor of that because then the next step would be not to to pitch is outside <laughs> or eight ball. <laughs> 
Vogelsong on deck. Pretty well. Deep right center. Fowler. Backpedaling and he makes a grab right in front of the wall to end the inning. Still 1-1. Middle of the fifth. Live sports. Watch every out of market game live or on demand in true HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Vogel song to Russell. Curve on the outer edges. Well, if Russell can reach. Cubs would be in uh, pretty good shape here with the lineup turning over. And their third look at Vogelsong. Duffy pulled in at third. Toes right on the edge of the grass. And we'll let that one go foul. And some sharply hit balls from both sides in this game that have turned into outs. Nobody's really hit the ball with any authority out there to left to try to take advantage of that win. If indeed it is helping as much as you know, those flags indicate, sometimes the flags can fool you. We're watching the Giants BP and, and their right handed hitters were hitting some bombs. And their bench went up off the scoreboard a couple of times. Center and wrestles aboard on a one two offer. Lined out in the second, so it's hit the ball hard both times up. And a lot of extra work you know, since the break with John Maley. Love to see it carry over into the game. Looked out, Fowler squared the bunt. And got a close shave.
Yeah, it's been a weird year for Dexter um, in the last month. You know, he, he went through a long slump. And then he got red hot there for a couple of weeks where he couldn't get him out. He was on base all the time, and now he's gone the other direction again. Steelers eight for eight with Vogel song on the mound. Posey has done a very good job shutting down the running game. And you see the batting average against for a second and third time through the order against Vogel song. Got a lefty up in their bullpen. Jeremy Affelt. Right behind him doing yoga. They added a new guy, didn't they, Len? Who's a new guy? Uh, Osich? Is that a yep. A left hander. Josh. Osich, we call from AAA Sacramento. 26 year old rookie. Oh, foul. Schwarber on deck. Giants looking for two. Tomlinson, you know, he's hedging his bet a little bit, not over quite as close to second base as you normally would be at double play depth, trying to plug that hole on the right side a little bit with Fowler swinging from the left side. Hooked to right. And he bangs it off the wall. Russell will be held at third, and the Cubs are in business. With two, three, four coming up, they've got him at second and third with nobody out. Well, here we go. Russell got on, lineup turned over, third look at Vogel Song, and a great opportunity to take the lead here. It doesn't really matter much where the second baseman is playing when you hit one off the wall and right. Pretty swing by Fowler. Great opportunity for uh, Dave Schwarber. And Posey out to the mound. And I believe Affeld is ready. And that will be it. Kind of an easy move for Bruce Bochy. And a bunch of left handed hitters do. We'll be back 1 1 in the fifth.
Budweiser, still brewed the hard way. This Bud's for you. Honda, great deals are happening at the Honda Summer Clearance Event. Now it's your Honda dealer. Napa, home of Napa know-how. Ford, America's best-selling brand, inviting you to go further in our fuel-efficient vehicles. Check out our entire lineup at your Ford store or at localfordstores.com. Subway, make a smart play for savory subs this season. Score more flavor at Subway restaurants. Subway, eat fresh. And by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Let's keep knocking starters out early. Now, Vogelsong just making a spot start, but the last five games, including today, the opposing starter has not completed six innings, so they're seeing a lot of other teams' bullpens. I'm seeing Jeremy Affelt for the second consecutive night. It's been a tough go for Affelt uh, this year with a 540 70 ERAs, yielded a 306 batting average. Lefty's hitting 277 against him, so he hasn't really shut. Left-handed hitters down. This is uh, his 762nd major league appearance, most among active left-handers. Second and third, nobody out. Ball one on Kyle Schwarber. He's doubled and struck out. A perplexed look uh, from Buster Posey out towards Jeremy Affel. I don't know if he crossed him up, but Posey was surprised by the action or the location of that pitch. Felt 36 years old. A 1 1 tie. Cubs trying to break that here in the fifth. Outside corner. 1 and 1. I don't need to do anything heroic here. And he could not hold up. Swing pitch, it's one and two. Yeah, now you really have to be willing to sacrifice a little bit just to make sure you put the ball in play. Especially the Cub hitters have really struggled this year making an adjustment. Uh, two strikes, nobody out, man on third base. Nothing wrong with a little ground ball to shorter second here. Just could not stop it. It's three to one. Yeah, better than a little ground ball to second base is a hard ground ball through the second baseman as Schwarber delivers with two strikes. Time to break out the thesaurus to come up with adjectives to describe how good uh, Schwarber's been. He's been splendid. <laughs> Takes on for second, and he's going to be safe. Percy is. Goes on first move. Brandon Bell taking a little extra time. Whoever gets the bag. It's his second career steal. I shouldn't say extra time from Bell, but maybe just not the, the sense of urgency that was needed. Coglin with a defensive bunt attempt there. Fortunate for his health that that ball hit the bat and rolled foul and not him. Both those runs charged to Vogelsong, so three runs against him today.
Good idea by Coughlin thinking bunt in this situation trying to get Schwarber over to third base. This is uh, not had a lot of at bats against left handed pitching. Third time he is now Petit has gotten loose in this series. We saw him up in the first and the second inning. Last night. So gets Schwarber to third as Coughlin bounces to belt. Let's step aside and see what's coming up on WGN. Leading 3 1 as they bat here in the fifth and a chance to get some more after beating the Giants last night to jump into the second wild card spot. Great to have you with us here on WGN today. Infield in against Anthony Rizzo. You could almost make a case that the Giants should walk him. Mm -hmm. He's been so good against lefties anyway. Yeah. We'll see how this at bat plays out, but I, I thought uh, might be what. Bruce Bochy was thinking with Petit up, walk Rizzo here and bring Petit in to face Bryant. But you know, I felt uh, has been around a long time, knows how to pitch, and it may be that Bruce Bochy just trusts him to pitch very carefully here to Rizzo, and if he ends up walking him, so be it. Round ball to first. Schwarber is going to stick at third. Two outs. Up to Bryant. Well, South front of that breaking ball a little bit. He dropped the head on it, hit it fairly hard, but easy play for Belt. Schwarber right in the middle of the run scoring rallies a double and he scored the first run in the opening inning and knocked in the other two here in the fifth. Two and zero to Bryant. Ball curve and uh, split. This is the repertoire for Affeld. Want to give in to Bryant here. Bruce Bochy will head to the home plate umpire Paul Schreiber and he's going to make a double switch. A 
will sort it out in a moment. Cubs lead 3 1 in the fifth. Pitch will be delivered by Jake Arietta at 120, and the first 5,000 kids at the ballpark will receive a construction Clark plush bear. After the game, the first 1,000 kids, 13 and younger, with appropriate wristbands, will be allowed on the field to run the bases, weather permitting. For more information, visit Cubs.com. Doria Aoki will come in and play left for Justin Maxwell, and here's right hander Yusmero Petit. Petit 401 ERA this year, 30 appearances. One start. First and third. As Petit works to Solaire, and instead he's going to fire to third. And you rarely see that these days. You won't see the fake to third throw to first because that would be a balk. They changed that rule a couple of years ago. Call strike. Yeah, I think the pickoff throw to third, especially with two outs, is a is a risky proposition unless you've got some intel that says you've got a base runner down there that's prone to mental lapses or overly aggressive. Chance that that could blow up on you. Hmm. So not so sure. Caught the outside corner, according to Paul Schreiber. Let's see what Xfinity pitch tracks thought of it. Well, he wasn't as high on it as Paul was. All right, stance for Solaire in the box. One and two. Be able to lay off that breaking ball, force him back into the strike zone. Petit did a very nice job with the Giants last year as a swing man. Made 12 starts. 27 appearances out of the bullpen, was five up, five down, 369 ERA. He nearly threw a perfect game a couple of years ago against the Diamondbacks. Retired the first 26. Bryant runs. Pitches outside. The throw is late. Schwarber holding it third. Chris Bryant with his 11th steal of the year. In time 2 2 on the hitter, Solaire. Yeah, Solaire, uh, who likes to hit the fastball, took a borderline pitch there. He got the benefit of the doubt on the call, and Bryant got second base. Swing with two strikes stays alive.
four pitch pitcher and uh, he'll use the, the breaking stuff a lot curveball slider you know so has a straight change to go along with a, a fastball that in terms of velocity is a couple of clicks below average but certainly can be effective if he has command of all that off speed stuff driven to deep left he won't get it. Two runs will easily score. Soler on his way to second. He's got a two bagger, and it's now five to one. Well, I tell you, JD, it was just fun to look down on the field, see Jorge Soler at the plate, see Kyle Schwarber and Chris Bryant on the bases, and think about how long they could play together. Yeah, we you know that opening graphic when we show the Cubs defensively, we, we flash the ages of all these kids. <laughs> so young. Talented, sure, raw in, in some respects, and uh, you know, ways to go before they uh, master their craft. But my goodness, there's a lot of talent there. The four spot here in the fifth, David Ross, and that'll get down, and so there will score six to one. As if to say, don't forget about the old guys. David Ross delivers. The three different uh, pitchers here in this uh, fifth inning for the Giants, and they have all given up runs. The high heater, outer third, end of the bat. Dumps it in front of Pagan for the RBI single. Lester the ninth batter of the inning and now has a healthy lead as he swings and misses for strike one. Five and a fifth. That always plays. Call this fifth inning in baseball lingo a hit parade. Would you say that hitting is contagious? No, but many <laughs> think it is. I know that guy's happy. Have put on their hitting shoes. <laughs> hitting is contagious. I haven't had the virus since I was about 12. <laughs> Lester went. I think he was fine with that. He'd like to get back out on the mound. It's a heat wave here in Chicago, and they're on their feet.
now for your chance to win six meals from the simple six menu at Subway. Subway, eat fresh. Message and data rates may apply. Here's Jonathan Herrera playing second for Chris Coglin. Cubs now leading six to one. Coglin got the start at second base, went two for three with an RBI. Yeah, so comfortable lead. Now you favor defense over offense. Herrera moves in for Chris, and yeah, two hits. And then moved a runner over last time up with a ground ball to the right side. Had a couple of chances defensively, and handled it without an issue. Aoki with his first plate appearance today, and he hits a ground ball diving. Attempt by Russell. All he did was slow down the hard hit grounder, and it's a base hit. Quick reaction by Russell, and uh, gets it cleanly. Aoki would have been a tough get anyway at first base. Today are four for six with men in scoring position. So they've got nine hits in all. They've had a lot of traffic. They've come up with some big hits. Most importantly. Pitch count in good shape. Not a terribly hot afternoon. And this, this is the kind of day now that you've got a 6 1 lead, you, you want your ace to take it to the house. Yeah. Doesn't mean he has to finish the game, but get you deep into it with a healthy lead. Turn it over to the bullpen. Yeah, that's the thinking of a starting pitcher once you have this sizable lead in the middle innings. Limit the number of outs my bullpen has to get here today. This should help. Six. Four, three, they turn it. Nice convenient chest high hop for Russell. On to Herrera, on to Rizzo. Not a big strikeout day for Lester, but he has not walked anybody. In there on the rookie Tomlinson. Swing and a miss on a change. 0-2. We're down five nothing early last night with a couple of two run homers that could only get to within five to four. The Cubs were able to hang on. No Madison Bumgarner this weekend. He pitched Wednesday in Atlanta. Strike three. We go to the bottom of the six. Mountains away and it'll take us to break. Cubs six, Giants one.
a five in the fifth inning. Kyle Schwarber playing left today. There's a couple of big hits. Knocked in two. Honda Dream Garage sales event. Now it's your Honda dealer. Addison Russell hits one just foul past third. He's fairly well locked in today. Addison Russell I'm talking about. Bullet first time up. Duffy made a heck of a play on him. Solid single last time. At the end of the bat, Pagan will drift back. And make the catch. The Cubs acquired Tommy Hunter last week from Baltimore for Junior Lake. He has been recalled by the Orioles. They have designated Travis Snyder for assignment. Uh, wish Junior the best. And wearing an Orioles uniform. Did they uh, bring him to the big leagues, Junior? Today. today. Just recalled him today. That's just what you said just now. Yep. I wasn't paying attention. That's okay. I was texting my daughter to tell her that Pat Foley was singing the stretch today. She's very excited. I usually, I, I've got you for about. 257 out of every three hours. So that, that's pretty good. Solid. Pretty good ratio. The other one that happens, and I, I've heard people say, you know, Len, you don't laugh at JD's jokes. Well, sometimes you don't need a laugh track. You can just be <laughs> funny. But other times, as you know, we we're talking, we we're hearing from and talking to the producer, a director in the truck. That'll drop for Fowler. And it's hard for them to talk to me, for instance, when I'm talking. So usually it's when you're talking, I hear from them, and right. vice versa. Right. So two hits for Dexter. He's on for Schwarber. You know, last time when it was Schwarber, or after he got his hit, and drove in two more. So, you know, we need Greg at the thesaurus to come up with new, new words uh, to describe his exploits here. I'm thinking maybe instead of that, we'll just we'll, we'll invent a new word called a Schwarber, and that anybody who excels at something immediately is known to have pulled a Schwarber later. Schwarberized. Yeah, he's, he's, yes. He Schwarbered it. Yeah. Let's make his name into a verb. Yeah. Like, like, like teaching a little kid to ride a bike is always a bit of a. An ordeal, but the kid gets it right away. Oh, he Schwarbert. Yeah, I've had a lot of people, you know, try to come up with a, a nickname. I'm not, kind of, I'm not really a nickname guy. If something really jumps out, it might stick. But he's just really good. <laughs> How about that? He's a really good baseball player, and he's here a lot sooner than a lot of people thought he would. And he might be here to stay at age 22. Kids who makes you look back and when you were 22 and I was 22, I think, no, it's not fair. Yeah, 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 to be sure. accomplished and yeah. the way he handles himself in interview situations. Fowler runs and he'll get the bag without a throw from Posey for his 17th steal. The Cubs have stolen uh, three here in the last two innings. Pretty good pitch went on the breaking ball. Posey realizing he didn't have a shot, decides to hang on. I mentioned this in spring training and did a, a post game event, a Cubs destinations Q and A with Kyle and you know, Chris Bryant. 22 year old, 23 year old. It was Schwarber's first big league spring training. And got all kinds of specific questions about catching and strategy, and he answered them like he 
is a 35 year old catcher. It's a ground ball to second. Tomlinson will make the play. A lot of guys can play this game at a high level, but they can't explain it. <laughs> he can. Yeah, I think the other part of it, we've heard a lot and seen a fair bit of him you know, talking to the coaches, talking with David Ross, uh, talking with some of the pitchers in the clubhouse, in the dugout. Um, so a willingness to, to admit there are things he doesn't know. And I think sometimes with a young player, uh, they kind of adopt this too cool for school mentality. I got this all figured out, and you don't see that at all from Kyle. And coachability is a big one. Herrera We're playing second. Two balls and a strike. Rizzo on deck. Herrera should get something to hit here. I think today was floppy hat day. I think there's a lot of new floppy hats in the stands. Most summer days should be floppy hat day. And they struck him out to end the sixth, but the Cubs lead this one six to one. Summer by Oceanas. We're underway here in the seventh. Curve strike from Lester to Duffy. And the great Pat Foley has joined us. He will conduct the seventh inning stretch today. Patrick, how are you? 
I'm awesome. What a day here at uh, Rig I, for a while there. I thought this game was going to take about an hour and a half. So <laughs> I think they started. No baseball to... game takes an hour and a half these days. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're working on pace of game. Always great to see you. Congratulations. Another amazing Stanley Cup run for the Blackhawks. And as you know, and you've been doing this a long time, fans tend to like us better when the team plays well, don't they? You know what? It's <laughs> the great Dan Kelly told me that a long time ago. However much preparation you do, whatever your style is, you always sound better when you win, right? No doubt. The hot dogs taste better, the beer's colder. <laughs> Two to Duffy. Bounces. So what you been doing this summer since the uh, uh, big playoff run? Play golf, a lot of golf, golf, I know that. Well, it, it's, it's uh, I've got a disease, I think. <laughs> I'm actually glad to have a day off today. But uh, what a beautiful place to come. I was just here about a week and a half or so ago, and, and uh, this place, the changes look uh, terrific. Well, as you know, I'm a huge hockey fan. JD is as well, and his whole family has jumped on the, the Blackhawks bandwagon. But uh, I hear from you and your, your partner, Eddie O, all the time about how the Cubs are doing. And uh, you've been following this team for a long, long time. Absolutely. Grew up here, and. Uh, Actually, the seed, the broadcasting seed was planted close to here. I think I might have told you the story. Len, stop me if I have. But uh, I was a, about 12 years old. My dad was a Buick dealer. Got to, I got to come and sit in the booth with Jack Quinlan and Lou Boudreaux, who were wonderful guys. I wrote them thank you letters. Couldn't have been nicer to me. But I'm sitting here that day with my eyes as big as sausage going, yeah, that's pretty cool. I want to try to think about something like that. Yep. There's Posey. It's the first walk issued by Lester. And popped into short right. Long run Soler. And that ball's going to drop. And everybody's safe. So Bloop single. How about Posey's two hits today? Yeah. you got to be kidding me. <laughs> it's 15 it's seconds in the air. Of, yeah, right? a couple of lob wedges. First time the wind got a hold of it. And Soler couldn't track it down. This time just not able to run under it. So that will bring up. Hunter Pence still no action in the Cubs bullpen. David Ross will head out and talk it over and with Lester. We get the sense that this is the, you know, the best chance the Giants are going to have to make a, a ball game out of this is to do some damage here with two on nobody out. Pence, Crawford, and Belt do up. And that's probably why nobody's up because after Pence, it's a couple of dangerous left handed bats that, you know, with a lefty on the mound can be neutralized. So what's the golf game like? It's, uh, uh, know, we Barkley would say terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it was really bad yesterday, but tomorrow's a new day. You never oh, that's know. That's right. Pitch to Pence he is low. Matt, the winner of the coveted Foster Hewitt Memorial Award, honored on June 5th of last year, the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto. And you mentioned Jack and Lou, but Got to mention Lloyd Pettit as well, your hockey broadcasting hero. Absolutely. I'm the kid in the commercial who had his transistor radio snuck under my pillow at night because I was supposed to be in bed, but I was listening to the Hawks. And uh, and he was a very nice man. He, I got to meet him when I first started to do uh, pro hockey and couldn't have been more helpful and encouraging. Um, I did an interview with him and he said, you know, I. In the booth for the last five minutes of that period. That's going to get in. And the Giants will get their second run of the day. Duffy scores. So walk single, single. And it's six to two. Continue. But, well, I, sorry to no, interrupt no. the ball game, but uh, uh, so Lloyd said I was listening to the last five minutes of that period. You didn't know I was there, but uh, keep it up someday, kid, and you'll be in the National Hockey League. I, I saved that tape. <laughs> he was a good scout. Yeah, well, guys like him and um, Dan Kelly was the guy who took me under his wing when I was a young guy in the NHL. And uh, people like Harry Carey and Jack Brickhouse, who couldn't have been any nicer to a young guy. And, you know, you were a kid once, too. You still look like one, but, you know, having that encouragement from guys that you look up to, wow, doesn't get any better. Now. You're absolutely right. And I know you have young people who come up to you and say those same things that you said to. To Lloyd and Jack and Lou back in the day, and those are pinch me moments, aren't they? They really are. Um, and you're 
kind to mention the HOF thing, but honestly, it's still very hard to wrap my head around. It's a wonderful honor, but uh, I think there's still still some tread on the tire, and you know that, that's kind of stuff that's supposed to happen at the end of your career. Isn't well, it? That's that's the best news. <laughs> You're right in the prime of it. There's Crawford still nobody out, and still a quiet Cubs bullpen. A swing and a miss. Crawford with an RBI single in the second was caught stealing. He had a two run homer last night, his 19th of the year. That's a career high and leads all major league shortstops. No one. And 0 2. He caught some baseball, a little different to pace than the I, main job. I have great respect for you and Pat and guys uh, who. Do this job. Uh, I've always said hockey's the hardest to keep up with. I think baseball is the hardest to be good at. There's a fair amount of filth. <laughs> yeah, the challenge in, in your sport, if you've got a great story or biographical nugget, is to find time to do it. Lester, they get oh, one. Oh, they turn it. What oh, a play by no. Russell. Oh, 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 how about this kid? Wow. Think back to the tag play he made earlier in the ball game, what he's done at the plate, and then this bit of a wizardry on the uh, throw from John Lester. Bruce Bochy's going to ask, yeah, he about won't. a possible neighborhood play situation, and if the throw pulled him off the bag, Pence may be safe at second. Yeah, John Lester <laughs> eavesdropping on this conversation wants to know what's going on. Well, Oof. you know. <laughs> He was on the bag and came off the bag as his, as he was catching the throw. This is a, this it. is this is prickly one here for the umpires. And and Joe's been out there to to talk to the umpires in the past of, of trying to ascertain exactly what the neighborhood play is, what the umpires are looking for. They talk about whether it's a true throw or not to the base. That's a very tough call for the for the guys in New York reviewing that play. Now, JD, would you agree that that would not be considered a true throw? I mean, Russell had to leave his feet. No, it, yeah, it wasn't a true throw. But the interesting thing was, as he was receiving the ball, his foot was on the base, and then you know, then he, he kind of came off the bag. So the question is, if the ball's in the glove and the foot is on the bag, he's out. Yeah, see, it's That's not. Yeah, I mean. I think there'll be a, a, a tough time overturning. Replay has worked well in hockey on goals, wouldn't you say? Yes, and I th I'm glad that that's about all they use it for. Um, you know, look at everybody wants to get every call right, but um, I don't think you want to risk taking the fastest game in the world and slowing it down too much. Is there anything about the game, the way it is played right now, that you would like to see change? Well, I think everybody's looking for more goals. You know, I mean, a two-one game can be tremendously exciting, and, and uh, but the way sports fans seem to be these days, you'd rather see a five-four. You know? what, what is? Are, are there any? You know, what, what do you do? Can you, can you can you make the equipment smaller for oh, the goalie? Oh, I make the goalie smaller. Because it's amazing, right? I, you look back at the old video from Tony yeah. Esposito and the boys back in the day, man. And they're upright. They're not all padded up. They're, there's a little more room to shoot the puck. I object to the leg pads that these guys wear now. Uh, back in Tony's day, just came over your knee. Look, you got to protect them. I've got no problem with that. But uh, the equipment, in my opinion, is, is too big. I mean, I've heard a lot of opinions about maybe increasing the size of the net. I, you know, I'd rather not do that. So oh, they got the out. Yep. So one six three on the double play. The pinch is out. So what's left is Posey at third and two outs in the inning and Brandon Belt will come up and it'll be three on three overtime. Yeah. Coming up this Thinking year. Of exciting. So yeah, for, for power something. plays they'll add players in overtime and, as opposed to take players off. Yes. Well you got to have three. <laughs> you you got to have wanna, three. You yep. want to get any less than that. So yeah that could be a significant change and theoretically more goals before you get to the shootout. Six to two. It's Lester against Belt. 
And it's off the plate outside. I do want to say while I get a chance before this inning ends that uh, Cubs baseball on TV is a treat with you guys. I've uh, been a Cubs fan for a long time, but uh, kudos to both all y'all up here. Uh, you do a heck of a job. We appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Pat. Right back at you, man. We've, uh, my family, as Len said, we, I grew up with hockey, but I, I, I kind of left it when I was down in Houston, and, and we came back to town and adopted the Blackhawks. And my daughters, man, they are in deep. <laughs> they are locked in, and it's been a lot of fun. And it's pulled foul. Yeah, we spent a few off days and off nights. I remember JD. We had a, a day game in Washington D.C. and we found a sports bar and watched. I want to say it was game, whatever it was, but it was a Stanley Cup final game for the Hawks and the Lightning. Nothing better than playoff oh, hockey. It's it's just just, I can't get enough of it. It is awesome. One and two on Belt. It's snagged by Ross. A. Ray Adrianza is on deck. I'm glad he's not a hockey player. <laughs> You've got some tough names. <laughs> yes, we do. Ben Smith, right? Two two it. inside. <laughs> yeah. Belt hit his home run last night into the bleachers in left center field, and unless they're trying to crowd him here, doesn't want him. Doesn't want to let him get extended. Playoff delivery is hook foul. Where the work doesn't stop around here. Did I just coming in and seeing the is the hotel starting just outside here and the bleachers? I think came out great. He really did. New boards getting rave reviews. The Cubs will have a, a brand new clubhouse. Will be on opening day next year. Ball four. Gonna bring up Adrianza, the pinch hitter. Second walk of the inning. Yeah, I think that one was well, just. Wanting to be careful to a dangerous hitter, uh, even though Belt has not done a lot against left handers. He certainly has power. Mr. Working hard here in the seventh. Pitch count in good shape, though, only 92 to this point. Switch hitter takes a strike. If he gets through it, it will be the seventh consecutive game that he has pitched at least seven innings. There's Osic. He just joined their roster today with Mike Leak going on the disabled list. And Ross will head out to the mound. So, Len mentioned you, had, you did a little baseball back in the day. What, what, uh, what is your baseball broadcasting story? Uh, what, I was a substitute. Uh, Back then, Chip Carey was here. He was doing some national games, so he had a few conflicts and uh, got a chance to work with Steve Stone a few times, which was a ball. Also did a few games down on the south side uh, when Hawk uh, had a couple of conflicts. So um, it's not a very long baseball career, but uh, it's really fun, and it gave me another sense of appreciation about uh, the job you guys did. Mr. wanted that one. Didn't get it. There been a few guys kind of looking back at uh, the umpire today. Pat, every day. As <laughs> <laughs> we get back at okay. the umpire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a blessing and a curse. The technology we have is we can put up a graphic with our pitch tracks and show you pretty much where every pitch landed. And we've got human beings down there making the calls. 
So stripes are solids. It doesn't make any sense. Lester grinding here in the seventh. Two hits, two walks, and a run. Bounced foul. Well, you got the super slow mo in hockey, and sometimes you see a penalty, and it looks like a penalty, and you go back and you go, hey, he, he barely touched him. And right. It's, a, it's such a fast game. It's really incredible, and I, I think it's markedly different. And, you know, you've watched the game as a great fan for a long time, but I mean, the last eight, ten years, it's dramatic. How much bigger, stronger, and faster all these guys are. I have to believe for much of the NHL's history, they had one referee. Oh! And it's two funny when, when they came in with a two referee system, all, almost all of the old timers didn't like that. They didn't want to share the spotlight, didn't want to have to have, have another opinion. And now you talk to the, those guys, oh, they wouldn't go back to the one man system. They couldn't. I mean, they really couldn't. It, it, it's hard enough with two. Two, two. Outside. Mm. Lester does not mm. hide his emotions. <laughs> he's the, hard, it. the harder you work, the more you want it. He's been working pretty hard here in the seventh, and pitching under some duress. He was very careful with belt, so got the jump on Adrianza trying to finish him off here. And no one's clearly outside, but again, the, the higher leverage the situation, the more you're apt to do that double take with the umpire. Belt will go with a 3 2. Ioki is on deck. He came in in the double switch, so he's in the nine spot in the batting order, left handed hitter. And again, that's likely why nobody's up in the bullpen. The 3-2 pitch popped him up. This will do it. Rizzo makes a catch. Time now for the seventh inning stretch it is brought to you by Budweiser. Here's Pat Foley. Today is guest conductor for Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Blackhawks broadcaster Pat Foley. All right, Cup fans, let Harry hear ya. Good and loud. A one. A two. I don't care if I am 
David Ross talk it over. He gave up one. Able to limit the damage. Exactly 100 pitches for John. And assuming that'll be it for him is Josh Osich will take over for the Giants. Nine ball games so far. Just recalled uh, here today. Leak being put on the disabled list. Fastball 96. Yeah, good life. Yeah, you know, a number of the guys, and we've talked a lot about that that group of four that they've had out there throughout this World Series run. Um, Afel Lopez, Casilla, Romo. The, the, the makeup of this bullpen different than many we see. They don't have a lot of those. 95 to 98 mile an hour fastball guys. Mm -hmm. Guys have had a lot of success. They can play the matchup game. But we saw the kid Strickland last night. He throws hard. This guy can light it up. So can that guy, Tommy Hunter, getting ready for the Cubs. Two balls and a strike. It comes and it's fouled upstairs. Forty one thousand three eleven in the ballpark. They have been loud. Side corner strike three. Time for a speed replay brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Another outstanding effort from John Lester here today. He has pitched uh, seven innings, allowed six hits, two runs, walked a couple, struck out three. Actually, his first start here in August, being uh, washed out on Monday. Swinging strike on Chris Bryant. Paul Fair down the left field line, and Bryant will make his way to second. With a double. Walks to the base and scored last time. Line drive double this time. And talk about Anthony Rizzo. Being better on the road than here at home this year. Chris Bryant just the opposite. He's put up very good numbers at Wrigley. He has struggled away from here. So Lair's starting to percolate a little bit. Inside for a ball, 97 that time. Percolate, that's a good word. And strike. Been a while since he's uh, been able to jog around the bases. It's 
This is fourth. Multi hit game in his last nine. It's a good change up for Mosich. Wind has not shifted a bit. It has been blowing from right to left since we started today. Just after three o'clock. He pops it up, short center, Pagan, with two hands on it. So two outs, and it will bring up David Ross. RBI single his last time up, part of that big five run fifth. I am not a scout. Well, I see 97 on the heat. Cutter at 91. Good change at 86. Mm -hmm. A lot to like. Sitch from Boise, Idaho to Oregon State. Taken in the sixth round, 2011. Tenth major league appearance. Allowed three runs, but they were all unearned. 6 2, 230. And the change up. Bryant safe. He just got in. A wild pitch on Osage. Well, squirts through the uh, five hole there on Posey. And Brian, who got hurt with a head first slide the other day, has said he wants to commit to sliding feet first if he can. Oh, calling it a pass ball. I disagree with the call, but doesn't matter. Swing and a miss by Ross in the inning. Is over. A double, no runs. We go to the eighth. Cubs lead by four. The tags.
sunny afternoon. The Kinks. They were really good. Ray and Dave Davies and company. Here's Tommy Hunter. Just his fourth appearance for the Cubs. And he's picked up a save. In Milwaukee, that was his first appearance as a Cub. Last night, he gave up a couple hits, one of them being a home run. One inning of work, two runs. That's why he saw the high ERA. He had been spot on prior to that one. And he has uh, averaged 98 miles an hour with the heater since joining the Cubs. Two oh. Aoki hits it high, hits it deep, and it will get out of here. That's a home run. Not much doubt about it. Six to three. Well, there are a number of guys in this giant lineup that you worry about hitting the long ball. Aoki, not the guy you. Uh, Thinking those terms about too much. This is his fourth long ball of the year. But he can surprise you. Generate some power, good bat speed. So Hunter has allowed home runs in each of the first two games of this series. And the guy who got him last night was a left handed hitter, Brandon Crawford. Pagan takes ball one. Aoki hit 10 home runs for the Brewers in 2012. So 2 0 on Aoki. Same count here on Angel Pagan. Now, if Pagan gets him, then you've really got a story because Pagan has the longest home run streak in Major League Baseball. Six hundred and sixty nine at bats since his last home run. Missed again. Three and oh. Hector Rondon. He is not taking much time playing catch right now with Chad Noble. Quickly. Three and one. The other way, base hit. First two have reached. This is a dangerous Giants lineup. Yeah, and after Tomlinson, it's uh, Duffy, Posey, Pence, Pence, excuse me, three potent right handed bats. That's why Rondon is getting ready here in the eighth. Joe uh, Madden has identified this as crunch time. Visit from Chris Bazio. It is Tomlinson who has struck out looking twice and grounded out. Good start.
have not met Kelby Tomlinson. But I think when you wear glasses, doesn't he just look smarter? Yeah, yeah you got about 50 points of IQ. Yeah, yeah. Just I, I would, I would like. Oh, I got to outsmart him. I can't just blow by him. I got to try to. He's going to know exactly what I'm throwing. Double A and Triple A and the big leagues this year. 321 as a minor league hitter. And he looks smarter in person with the glasses. The 02. A chopper. And they get one. Hunter covering safe. Bang, bang at first. And Tomlinson beats the throw according to Field and Colbreth. Wow. It's making some noise here in the eighth. Tomlinson racing down the line. Appeared to just beat Tommy Hunter. Or did he? No. I think Joe's oh, going to challenge. He got him, yeah. Yeah, they really got him. Has to reach back a little bit for the throw, but it looked like Hunter still got sure he did. He's out. So this should not take long. That'd be a huge first out. Stumble out of the batter's box may have been the key to that play. Off balance swing and a little slip as he pushes off. Good job by Hunter because that's the kind of ball a lot of times where you'll see it off the bat and you'll think, well, that's a that's a four to three put out. And you quit on it a little bit, not realizing the first baseman's playing well off the line. So that's why they tell you, you know, anytime the ball is on the ground to the right side, break. We have overturned it. He's out. Joe will retain his challenge and he'll make a pitching change here and it will be a double switch. We'll be back six three Cubs in the air. Chris Norfia will take over and right for Jorge Soler and he'll hit in the eight spot. The 
comes hard throwing Hector for the 51st time. Save number 17 last night. He has an 060 ERA in his last 31 games. That's dating back to May 25th. And then with Rondon now in the game, you've got two lefties up in the Cubs pen. Clayton Richard and James Russell. There's Rich and Russ. Could be Richard Clayton and Russell James, and nobody would bat an eye. Right? The 1 0 to Duffy is fouled off. Runner at second, that's Pagan. Aoki homered to start the inning. I uh, like what, what Joe has done here. Uh, Rondon has been so good for so long now. Joe identifying this as you know, the, the dangerous part of the order with the, the three run lead. Autopilot managing says this guy's got the eighth, this guy has the ninth. Joe is saying, is, I want my, you know, my shutdown guy out there at, at what I perceive to be the most critical time. It's spreading out the emotion <laughs> late in the game. Yeah, spread out the emotion, and somebody else is going to, you know, if, Things go according to plan. Somebody else is going to be out there to try to finish off this ball game. And uh, after this Duffy Posey Pence triumvirate, you got the lefties, Crawford and Belt. So that's why the lefties are up in the pen now. The plan is not to deal with those guys till the ninth. Swing and a miss, strike three. One of the hottest hitters in baseball here as of late. A double, a single, and has grounded out. Batting average up to 333. Tremendous numbers doing it at a premium position. He's very good behind the plate as well. Goldschmidt 339, Bryce Harper 334. Sharply hit grounder, Addison Russell. And Hector Rondo faces two, retires them both. 6 3 in the eighth. Field. 
Wednesday night, 7 o'clock Central, Brewers and Cubs. Josh Osic continues and facing Chris North, who just came into the game. Is a strike on the inside edge. Well, Rondon only needed six pitches to get those two out, so it is feasible. After the double switch, yeah, that he mm -hmm. could get the final five outs. We'll see. And that is a good changeup. And nobody throwing right now. Uh, I'm guessing make their heads back out there. Kid has played a heck of a game. He's made two terrific plays right around the bag at second. It will not show up in the box score other than they were outs. As Crawford gets rid of it quickly and what a snag on the short hop by Brandon Belt. Tag playing a double play. And Russell. Showing off his athleticism. At the plate, one out of three with a run score. Apparently, he can do a, uh, a backflip. From a dead standstill. And you can't? Well, yeah, no, I can't. Have you seen some video of this? No, David Ross was telling me about it. Okay. Well, that's impressive. Yeah. So somebody from uh, from Oakland told David after after the Cubs acquired uh, Russell talking about him, said, hey, you're gonna get this kid to do his flip. Say it was Joey Gathright. He was briefly a Cub. There's video of him jumping over the moving car. Mm -hmm. The other guy was uh, Cody Ransom that, that could really jump. Could do the standing jump. Yeah. yeah. Two two on Russell. Do not try any of those things at home. Not the proper supervision. Strike three. To bring up Fowler is on base streak up to 21 games and counting with two hits. Stolen base. A run scored.
One and one. That was an impressive swing of the bat. Bell ties something or other, maybe a changeup. It's the 11th home run of the year for Dexter. Too shy of his career best with the Rockies in 2012. Back to four. And Schwarber takes a strike. Time for a Southwest Airlines. How far did it fly? 395 feet to the bleachers. Going two. You know what we haven't found a cure for yet, JD? Uh, the summertime blues. That is correct. 7 3. The summertime blues. Now seven to three. And it is Hector Rondon. And Fowler started the day, uh, strikeout looking first time up, flew to center. We we're talking about his recent struggles, and boom, 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 double single home run, final three trips. If Rondon finishes it, he will get a save. We're not sure he's going to finish it just yet. Two and zero on Pence. Four 
Three balls, no strikes. And just got to start throwing some. Uh, here it is. See how far you can hit it. Fastballs here to Pence with a four run lead. Lefty's coming up next. I'm guessing this will be it for Hector. Eastern time zone games just getting underway around baseball. We're in the ninth. Cubs leading by four. With a leadoff walk to Pence. I mentioned earlier Kershaw and Cole. Dodgers at the Pirates. And they just got started. So 37 consecutive scoreless innings. Clayton Kershaw. Ball one on Crawford. You know, the irony is, and I don't know this for sure, but had Rondon gotten tense, Joe might have gone to the pen. Seems a little counterintuitive, but it, you know, his thinking may have been look, I got a four run lead, two outs to go with a couple of left handed hitters up there. Why push Rondon, overextend him? Uh, if I get him out of here now, I might have him available tomorrow and should be able to trust my guys to, to get two outs with a four run lead. I mean, I think he'd be justified in, 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 in making the change whether Pence reached or not. One and zero on Crawford. It's a good shot. We just had a Joe exhaling there. Uh, you know, he's a very cool guy. We talk a lot about his personality and the, and the, the vibe around this club, but. You know he feels it just like any other big league manager. The stress. Two and one. Yeah, and your job is to kind of worry before you have to worry. That's one of the manager's number one jobs, especially late in a ball game, is to anticipate. Crawford went around. Two and two. Makes a catch. It would have had an out somewhere as Pence really could not stray very far. Support coming from all sides. Yeah, that's exactly what we talked about it earlier with, with this wind blowing. The sky's a little more player friendly right now. It's not quite as bright overhead, but still breezy. So everybody pursuing that one until somebody took charge. Bryant heading across the diamond as they shift against Brandon Bell. Kind of looked like the kicking team going down to cover a punt. <laughs> yeah, and Denorfia made the mm -hmm. fair catch. Well, Bell. Ooh, it's going all right. <laughs> Two 
Did he trip or was yeah, he diving he stumbled, after he, that I one? think he slipped. Well, it was, uh, he went down last night on the final out of the game. Pretty graceful fall. Which is better than a fall from grace. Oh, it wasn't so graceful. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like he knows he's the only guy that's got a chance to make a play on a bunt push that way. So he was bound and determined to make a play on that bunt if it were fair. Pitch takes off, and the Cubs will not make a throw. So Actors got a little two-game uh, stumble streak going. Final out of the game last night. Ground ball to second base. He reached for it. Rolls over. Comes up chuckling. The Cubs have a three-game stumble streak. Didn't Jason Mott fall <laughs> down on a pitch the other night You're in Pittsburgh? Right, he did. One one. One and two. Fazio should have a little fun with his guys. Hey guys, we're coming out for some early work tomorrow. We're gonna run off the mound and try not to fall. Be dressed at three. Gregor Blanco's on deck. Making sure that Hunter Pence not going to be able to relay location to Brandon Belt starts inside then shifts out. Hitters also can kind of feel where the catcher is, so try to deke him a little bit. Mm -hmm. right, doing some of the guys lean in there and pound their mid a little bit and then slide back. The setup inside and the base runner on second and the hitter, you know, if they have any kind of a signal. You set up inside, you know it's going to be something hard, either a fastball or a cutter. By the way, Clayton Kershaw's scoreless streak ends on the first pitch. Gregory Polanco, Polanco hit a home run. I, know, I want to call Blanco Gregory Blanco. It's Gregor Blanco and Gregory Polanco. Swing and this 98 gets him. Two down. with a little run. Russell's still throwing. It looks like Justin Grimm has joined him. Richard has sat down. 7 3 here in the ninth. The pitch. 1 and 1. It's a time for DeNorfia to get underneath. Cubs win! Cubs win, 7-3 the final. They've taken the first two of this set and now are a game and a half ahead of the Giants in a season best 12 over 500. Yeah, they've won eight out of nine. They banged out 12 hits today. Another big day for Kyle Schwarber. That man right there, Dexter Fowler, with three knocks, including a home run. Addison Russell. Sparkling work defensively. Also had a good day at the plate. You know, it's kind of fun 
Uh, I, Anthony probably wouldn't agree with me, but Anthony Rizzo went 0 for 4 today. For the Cubs to be able to score seven, bang out 12 hits, and, and the big guy not be in the middle of it, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, they've relied on him a lot this season. And everybody pitching in today, and Hector Rondon gets a five out save that you would think would take him out of the mix tomorrow, but we're at that stage in the season, and you are staring at a possible win. You do everything you can to grab it. And the Cubs are able to do that. And now the challenge, J.D., remember they won the first two games against the Dodgers, started by Kershaw and Greinke, and then lost the final two. So you'd like to keep yeah, this yeah, momentum yeah. going this weekend. Kyle Hendricks going tomorrow. Matt Cain for the Giants. Dexter Fowler is with us down on the field. Dexter, congratulations. A big home run late to add some insurance. How about the atmosphere in this ballpark? Oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. Man. The fans, are, are they're really showing up. I haven't seen anything like this in a while. Uh, 21 consecutive games. You'll reach base. We're looking at the replay of your home run now. Was it a changeup? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was a changeup. He left it up, so, you know, it came out of his hand. Thought it was a good pitch to hit. How, uh, and how often is... Right-handed Dexter and left-handed Dexter locked in at the same time. <laughs> you know what? It's not often. It's not often. You know, sometimes you, you, you get on the left side and you're like, man, I feel great. And then you get on the right side, like, not so much. But, uh, you know, feeling feeling good. Feeling good from both sides. How about this kid, Kyle Schwarber? Oh, he's unbelievable. You know, there, I don't think there's anything in the game he can't do. You know, the guy stealing bases, playing left field, catching. You know, not a lot of guys can do that. J.D. just made a point that, you know, Anthony did not – do a whole lot offensively today. That, that's good though, right? Because for a while there, it felt like with him went the offense. But I know it's better when everybody's contributing, right? Yeah, for sure. Bus 44 was, was was driving us for a while. So uh, you know, the guys step in and uh, you know, pitching staff and and everybody. It's a good team win. Plus 24, pretty solid here today. Thanks for the time, Dexter. Thank you guys. That's Dexter Fowler. He had a big day: a double, single, home run, stolen base, two runs, and the Cubs. Beat the San Francisco Giants 7 3 the final. And they've now won eight of their last nine. And as is usually the case, especially when the Cubs are winning, nobody wants to leave. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> 